Hey there, everybody. Do you love to travel and learn about new places? Great, then you are in the right place. Join Jasmine the cat and Gracie the tortoise as they have fun traveling the beautiful United States and learning lots of cool new facts. Hey, everybody. It's Jasmine the jazzy gray cat here with my bestie Gracie the super smart tortoise. Say hi, Gracie. Hello, my good friends. It's Gracie here. Are you ready to explore Idaho with us, our 43rd state? The capital and biggest city is Boise. Boise. What a fun name. Sounds like we're saying Boise. I bet we'll see some great places. You're right, Jazzy. We will. To start off with an interesting fact, the name Idaho is a made-up word. What? You're kidding. How did that happen? Here's the story. It was suggested by George M. Willing when Congress was deciding what to name the area which is now Idaho. He claimed that the word was a Native American word that meant gem of the mountain. But guess what? He made it all up. Gracie, that was not very nice. But it is a good name because Idaho is full of gems. Miners have found 72 types of gemstones here, like diamonds, rubies, and even rare star garnets, the state gem. And they even found the biggest diamond in the United States right here in Idaho. That's why Idaho is called the gem state. And as you know, I love gems, so I will like it here. I'm sure you will. A little historical background on Idaho. Native American tribes, such as the Nez Perce, Coeur d'Alene, Shoshone, and Blackfeet, were here when Meriwether Lewis, William Clark, and Sacagawea came in 1805. Just like Washington State, Idaho was part of the U.S. and England until 1846 and the Oregon Treaty, which gave it to America. Settlers came in droves when gold was discovered in 1860. Gracie, there sure is a lot of gold in them dare hills here out west. Idaho also grows lots and lots of potatoes. One third of all the potatoes grown in the U.S. That's about 27 billion potatoes a year. That's sure a lot of french fries. But not everybody likes potatoes. And if you don't, you can try some treats inspired by potatoes. Ice cream potatoes look like baked potatoes with sour cream, but are made with vanilla ice cream that's coated in cocoa and topped with whipped cream. And we could also try the Idaho Spud. It's candy made from marshmallow covered in coconut and chocolate. Both of them sound like sweet treats to try. I agree. People here really love their potatoes. We can visit the Idaho Potato Museum in Blackfoot. The museum is really easy to find. Just look for a giant baked potato statue out front. When you're in the mood for a movie, Go to the Spud Drive-In Giant Potato for a movie and a pic with a giant fake potato. Those are exciting ideas. Now come on over to the map so we can find Idaho and get some of those treats. Way ahead of you, Gracie. Hey, I found Idaho on the map. It's right here below Canada, with Montana and Wyoming to the east, Utah and Nevada to the south, and Oregon and Washington to the west. Our cute blue camper is ready to go. Onward! I am ready also. Idaho's famous person is the brave Native American Sacagawea. She was born to a Shoshone chief here before Idaho became a state. She was only 16 years old when she became a guide for Lewis and Clark. Besides helping them in unfamiliar land, she found food and medicines for the men. Sacagawea also helped keep peace with the Native Americans that they met. Wow! She was amazing! I know that she even brought her baby boy with her and took care of him too while they traveled. When the group reached the Pacific Ocean at the end of the journey and saw part of a beached whale, she was astounded at how big it was. And you know what? Lewis and Clark could have never done it without her. You're right, Jazzy. Sacagawea was an extraordinary woman. Now, first stop, the moon! Gracie, the moon? I thought we were exploring Idaho. We are, but it looks like we're on the moon at the Craters of the Moon National Monument and Preserve. So, tell me how we have the moon in Idaho. As you may have guessed, Jazz, it's not really the moon, but three large lava fields. The fields were formed from eight different eruptions that each happened 2,000 years apart, and it's possible that another one may happen soon. The fields are along the Great Rift of Idaho. A rift is a valley in the earth. 
The Great Rift of Idaho was caused by a volcano and is one of the deepest on Earth, 800 miles deep. Wow! I bet you need a parachute or a really long ladder to go down that far. I imagine you would, but let's explore the lava fields. We will walk on the lava tubes and crawl into the lava caves. Gracie, the land is all black and gray rocks. Why, yes, that's the hardened lava. We will need a cave permit so we can explore the caves. Got mine right here. Hiking up the black sand to the top of Inferno Cone is hard. And it's windy up here. Inferno Cone is a mound that was formed when the lava spit up into the air and then landed back down on Earth. Gracie, look! There are those Indian paintbrush flowers and other plants growing at the top of the cone. Yes, it is a marvel how plants can grow with just the smallest amount of soil. Now let's do some caving in the lava tubes. Indian Tunnel is right over here. Great idea, Gracie. This looks so fun. Got my headlamp on. Now watch your step as we go down these stairs. <gasps> over there! I want to climb up on this big lava rock pile. Oh, which way now? Ooh, I found a secret exit. Totally cool. I feel like a real astronaut here. And we didn't even need a spacesuit. Now we're headed south to Shoshone Falls on the Snake River. I've heard of this place. It's called the Niagara Falls of the West. The falls are 45 feet higher than Niagara Falls at 212 feet. Aren't they breathtaking? These falls were named after the Shoshone tribe. The water is rushing over a 900-foot rock formation that looks just like a horseshoe. It is so gorgeous here. Such a nice place to take a break. Even travelers on the Oregon Trail stopped here for a rest. Ooh, I can see people kayaking at the bottom of the falls. Looks like they're having fun. Come on, Greasy. Let's go to the Idaho Potato Museum in Blackfoot. It'll be fun. Absolutely. What could be more fun than learning about potatoes? Uh, I don't know, Gracie. But take my picture with this giant potato statue out here before we go in. I got your good side, Jazzy. This tour is certainly interesting. Did you know the first potatoes came to America in 1621? I wonder if the pilgrims brought them. Look at all the farm equipment used by potato farmers. Oh, it looks like it's really hard work. Let's go into the potato lab and do some experiments. Great idea. What a wonderful place to discover what a potato can do, besides being part of dinner. This wonderful contraption is a clock powered by potatoes, and it has the correct time. That's interesting. How about a Mr. Potato Head race? I bet I can get mine together first. Yay! I did it! Gracie, you have his foot in his ear. So silly. Well, I'm sure it's much easier to do with opposable thumbs like people have. Who knew potatoes were so riveting? Are you thirsty, Jazz? How about a stop at Soda Springs? Soda? Sounds great. I hope they have grape. That's my fave. I'm sure they will have grape soda, but that's not what you'll get to drink from Soda Springs. Native Americans and travelers on the Oregon Trail also enjoyed the bubbly water that comes from the hundreds of natural springs of carbonated water found here. The pioneers called this place the Oregon Trail Oasis. Oh boy, we will be stopping where the pioneers did. What else do I need to know? Besides the delicious water, we can watch the Soda Springs geyser, the only geyser that has been made by people. Made by people? How is it made? Well, Jasmine, it all started with a swimming pool. About 80 years ago, when drilling to make a bathing pool, water just started shooting out of the ground and the geyser was discovered. The geyser is now set on a timer and goes off every hour for 10 minutes. Gracie, up here with me to get a great view. It's almost time. Whoosh! It's blowing and shooting up 70 feet. Wow! It's just like a super tall fountain. It sounds just like a roaring dragon. I love it. Now let's get some of that water. Ooh, it is bubbly soda water. It's good, but I think it would be even better with great flavor in it. Perhaps it would be, but I am enjoying it just the way nature created it. 
great, Gracie. Now it's time to get back in our cute blue camper and head for home. And let's tell potato jokes. I have mine already. What do you get when you put an elephant and a load of potatoes together? I know this one, mashed potatoes. Great job, Gracie. Now it's your turn. Here goes. What does a potato say on a sunny morning? I don't want to get baked in the sun. Excellent try, but the answer is, what a mashing day. Oh, I get it. A mashing day because potatoes are sometimes mashed. Pretty funny. Now my favorite place was Soda Springs Geyser and watching the geyser zoom up into the sky. What about you, Gracie? I enjoyed exploring Craters of the Moon National Monument. It was just like going to the moon. Now how about you, friends? What was your favorite place today? Don't forget to tell someone you love. That's right. Thanks for exploring with us and come back next week for Wyoming. Bye now. Say goodbye, Gracie. Goodbye, my dear friends. Thanks for coming. See you next time. Hey, everybody. Thanks for joining Jasmine and Gracie on their adventure today. Come back next week for the next one. Hello, everybody. It's Gwen here. If you want to know more about the places we visited, just go to our website, jasmineandgracie.podbean.com, and go to the sources page, and you can find out all about the great places that we visited. See you next week. Bye-bye.